Welcome to my channel. This is where we simplify anatomy and here we also learn anatomy with so much fun. Right on with me as I unfold the histological presentation of the art. <laughs> heart tissue is processed into histological section. This lecture will unfold the kind of presentation that will be seen under the microscope. The wall of the heart is structurally divided into three sub-layers. We have the epicardium, which is the most external region of the heart, and this is the region where we have the epicardium. Deep to the epicardium, we have the myocardial layer. This is the myocardium. It is the thickest region or layer of the heart. And the internal lining of the heart, which is deep to the myocardium, is the endocardium. And this is the endocardium. And the endocardium is seen to line the interiors of the heart, including the valves and also the septum. Also to add that there are variations in the different layers of the heart. And this depends on the regions that is processed into histological section. So in the ventricular region, because we already established in our previous lecture on the art, if you've not checked up that lecture, please kindly go and do so, where we establish that the ventricles are thicker than the atrium. So we should expect that in histological section, the presentation of the myocardium of the histological section of the ventricular region will be thicker than what will be presented in the atrium because the muscles are thicker in that region. Also to add that the endocardial layer of the atrium is thicker than what is seen in the ventricle. We already established that the myocardial layer of the ventricle is thicker than that of the atrium. This is just to complement the thickness of the ventricle. So the different regions of the heart present different thickness in the sub-layers of the heart. Also to further heart that the pumping action of the heart as it is known to be responsible for pumping out blood is solely centered around the myocardium which is the muscular layer of the heart. And this is the middle thick region of the heart. The myocardium is responsible for pumping blood due to its ability to contract and relax. And this also receives support from the epicardium and also the endocardium. But the sole responsibility of the heart pumping out blood is centered around the myocardium because it is the muscular layer of the heart. So let's try and drive in into the layers of the heart to see what is presented under the microscope. So let's first go through the epicardium. The epicardium, as we've established, that it is the most external layer of the heart. The epicardium is also referred to as the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Remember a lecture on the pericardium, where we try to subdivide the pericardium into the serous pericardium and the fibrous pericardium. This is the serous pericardium highlighted in blue, and the fibrous pericardium is highlighted in yellow. That is the external layer, while the layer that is closely attached to the heart is the serous pericardium. We also further establish that the serous pericardium is subdivided into two layers. We have the visceral pericardium, which is the layer of the serous pericardium that is closely attached to the heart. And external to this region, we have the parietal layer of the serous pericardium, which is on the outside. So we say that the epicardium can also be referred to, or also means the visceral layer of the serous pericardium because it is the layer that is closely attached to the heart. We know that pericardium is a double-layered sac that that is seen to enclose the surface of the heart. But specific region of the pericardium that is closely related to the heart is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. And this is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. This layer is closely attached to the heart, and this is also the epicardium of the heart. So the epicardium can also be referred to as the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. So going back to the epicardium, as we've established that it's the most external layer of the heart, this is the region in this histological presentation that is marked in black, and this is the region on the outside. This region appears to be very light. So what are the components of the epicardium? In the epicardial layer of the heart, which is the most external layer, we have simple squamous epithelium, which are flat cells that are seen in the most outer covering of the epicardium. And this layer can also be referred to as the mesothelium. In addition to the simple squamous epithelium, we also have connective tissue and also fatty tissue. So this is the simple squamous epithelium that is seen on the outside. And within the epicardium, we also have connective tissue and also fatty tissue, which are highlighted in white in this histological presentation. And this layer tends to be very slippery because 
because of the presence of pericardial fluid, which is the fluid that is seen within the pericardial cavity, this fluid presents a form of slippery action, and this helps to lubricate the surface of the heart. So the heart can move freely and is able to contract and relax at free will in the quest of pumping out blood. Also within the epicardium, we have the passage of the coronary blood vessels and nerves. We know that the coronary blood vessels are seen on the surface of the heart, and this provides blood supply to the heart tissue. Because the heart is a pumping organ that helps to pump blood to supply oxygen and nutrients to the different organs in the body, does not mean that its own cell does not also need oxygen and nutrients for its metabolic activity to be able to exhibit the pumping action. And that is why we have the emergence of the coronary artery which is branched from the ascending aorta so as the coronary artery branches from the ascending aorta you see it running through the surface of the heart within the epicardial layer of the heart so the second layer which is the middle layer is the myocardium and the myocardium is made up of cardiac muscle which is filled with cardiac myocytes and also connective tissue the connective tissue helps to organize the cell in the pattern that they are presented. This is what is seen in the myocardial layer of the heart. So you see muscle fibers, but the specific type of muscle that is seen in the heart is cardiac muscle. This cardiac muscle has a skeletal and also smooth muscle characteristics. It is an involuntary muscle because the action of this muscle cannot be controlled. We cannot say that we want the heart to contract or relax on our own. It is not something that we can control. So the action of the cardiac muscle is involuntary. Also, it is skeletal because it is a striated type of muscle. So it has both smooth and also skeletal muscle presentation. So let's drive a bit in on the characteristics of the cardiac myocyte. The cardiac myocyte has cellular configuration or cellular component of the myocardium. This muscle cell a branch linear cell, which means that they are long cell or straight cell, but are seen to present a branch network. And this is what is seen in this presentation. You see the cell, they are elongated, but they tend to present a kind of branch network in order to be connected and form a large mass of muscle. The cardiac myocyte, which is the cell that forms the cardiac muscle, is seen to have a centrally placed nucleus and this is the nucleus centrally placed within the cytoplasm. Other organelles that are prominent or seen in large number within the cytoplasm of the cardiac myocyte is mitochondria. We have a large number of mitochondria and also glycogen granules. The mitochondria are so needed so as to be able to provide energy in form of ATP. We know that the cardiac muscle undergo continuous contraction and relaxation in order to be able to pump out blood. This action cannot not be stopped it is continuous because the heart needs to continuously pump blood to feed the body cells with oxygen and nutrients and this action of course needs a lot of energy so the cytoplasm of the cardiac myocyte is filled with a large number of mitochondria so as to be able to meet up with the demand of the energy that is required to be able to perform this action also the glycogen granules are also seen in large amount within the cytoplasm this is also to augment or support the availability of energy for this heart muscle to be able to contract and also relax. So that is the characteristics of the cardiac myocyte. And these cells, we already said that they are elongated and also branched. So they tend to connect with one another to intercalated disc. The intercalated disc structurally helps to link the cells together. This is the intercalated disc in this region. This is another intercalated disc where one cardiac myocyte connects with the other. And within the intercalated disc, what is seen within this space are the desmosome, adherent, and also gap junction. What this structural presentation does is to allow the transportation of aion and if aeons are being able to be transported from one cell to another, there's going to be the transmission of action potential. And if action potential is being able to be transported, there's going to be a concurrent transmission of synchronized contraction. So that as contraction occurs, it's not going to be limited to just one cell. It is going to be able to be transported along the cell so that the entire cell can work as a unified entity in able to contract a stretch and also relax to pump out blood to fill the different structures or organs in the body with oxygen and nutrients. So that is what is presented within the intercalated disc. 
So let's go to the last layer, and this is the endocardium. The endocardium is the most internal layer, and this layer appears to be very thin, and smooth, and also glistery. So you see that the gross presentation of the heart, when you look at the internal lining of the heart, you see that it appears to be very shiny. The glistery nature allows for easy movement of blood within the cavities of the heart because of the presentation of the endocardium. This glistery presentation helps to reduce friction between the wall of the heart and also blood because we know that we have blood within the heart. So apart from the endocardium lining the interiors of the heart, they also seem to line the septum and also the valve. So they are not limited to just lining the interiors of the heart. You also see them in the regions where we have the septum and also the valves of the heart. The endocardium is further subdivided into three sub-layers. So even though it is the most internal layer, it has a further differentiation into three sub-layers. We have the first layer, which is the innermost layer that is seen with simple squamous epithelium. And this is the innermost layer. If you look more external to this simple squamous layer, we have the sub-endothelial layer. The sub-endothelial layer is seen with connective tissue and also smooth muscle. And this is the sub-endothelial layer, which appears to be external to the innermost layer that is lined with simple squamous epithelium. This smooth muscle that is presented within the subendothelial layer helps to prevent the collapse of the endocardium, thereby helping to give it structural strength. Then more external to the subendothelial layer, we have the subendocardial layer. The subendocardial layer is not seen in all regions of the heart, so it is limited to specific regions of the heart. And where you see this layer more is in the ventricular wall, and this is the subendocardial layer. In this layer, we have Purkin J fibers. The Purkin J fibers are part of the conducting system of the heart, which helps to generate impulse. And also, they are seen to contain blood vessels and also nerves. And these are the Purkin J fibers. This Purkin J fiber appears to be larger than the cardiac myocyte. If you see the way they are presented, you see that they are larger than the cardiac myocyte. The Purkin J fibers are a network of fibers that helps to receive signals and also helps to transmit excitation. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again in our next class.